Let's explore more on the metric results now and speak to Professor Bram Fleisch of the School of Education and he's the Professor of Education Policy there. Thank you so much, Prof, for your time this afternoon. We're just listening to the technical briefing by the Department of Basic Education, DG, and it talks about, you know, again, around 1.2 million uh, starting school in 2012, but those who leave the system are still far less than those who have entered the system. And the DG is saying that this, is, this dip is caused by you know the gatekeeping that they've implemented because of the pressure that has now been put on principals for the schools to perform but is there enough tracking of these young people who start school who never get to grade 12 thank you for inviting me onto the show and just to congratulate all those who've done so well this year i think the dg did point out that one of the big challenges is not in the high schools but actually yeah. in the primary school the recent release of the polls results in 2021 suggests that a significant number of children never actually get to a minimum benchmark for reading by the end of grade four. And the president has made it clear that by 2023, he would like to see all children be able to read for meaning. And at the moment, we're a long way off. So many of the challenges that we currently face in the system and the significant portion of children who don't get to grade 12 are really stymied at the very beginning of their school career. And what does it mean then, when, when, especially when you think about the system? I mean, I was listening to the IEBCO talk about the fact that you started from early on in order to implement some of the targets right up until matric. It's not a journey that starts when they're starting matric. So what needs to change? in order to be able to get us to a point where we are counting for more and more young people who are either at TVET colleges or are able to end up with some qualification? Well, clearly it's very important that we focus on those first three years or the first four years, the, the grade R, grade one, grade two, grade three. The kind of pool subjects of all learning are essentially established when children learn to read and they need to be learning to read first in their home language. And then, of course, for many, would be in English. If they're not fluent readers, it's extremely difficult to really gain the insights in the core, on the core academic subjects. So we've got to focus on ensuring that all of our children are proficient readers by the end of the foundation phase. They also need to be proficient in the basic skills associated with mathematics. And, uh, you know, a, a decrease in progress learners, we've seen quite a lot of talk about this over the years. And we're seeing provinces, for example, like Limpopo, Eastern Cape and Mpumalanga, accounting for an increase in this regard and I wonder if we're seeing a decrease in progress learners is that a positive step in the system I'd have to look much more closely at the technical report I am aware however that there is another dimension to this that needs to be addressed which is that um, there's been significant decline in the failure rates in grade 10 11 12 and a recent report from Stellenbosch University has pointed that out. And I don't know its relationship to progressed learners, mm. but it's certainly an issue that we need to look much more closely at. So when we then are looking at, you know, someone often um, has this conversation, Prof, and, 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 and I'm hoping that tonight we get to really just spell it out for, for, for our viewers as well. There's a whole lot of focus, particularly when you think about how the IEB, um, you know, results are 98.46%. That's quite a huge feats and, 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 and really something to, to celebrate. But then you look at our own system as well. We're hearing that there will be an improvement as well. But is the quality of the results here something that we should also be focusing on? So I think we need to take a long-term perspective. Yeah. There's no doubt over the last 25 years, the school system and particularly the secondary school system serving kids in working class communities and townships and rural areas, schools have gotten much much better. There's much more stability. There are programs now in place that have been in place for decades now that provide extra support to children across the board. So we really need to recognize that there has been a real stabilization of the system. In 1995, we were uh, inherited a very, very dysfunctional school system, particularly for kids in rural areas and townships. And over the last 25 years or the last 30 years, there's been enormous strides, and I need to give credit to many extremely um, hardworking and committed principals and teachers who've been part and parcel 
parcel of that improvement. So I think that's the big picture. That said, I think that um, there's been some shifts in the system as a whole. So we're now seeing for the first time some Quintile 5 schools, both former House of Assembly, House of Rep schools, that have essentially become, become less effective in what they did before. At the same time, we've got some schools in the townships uh, across the board, not just in Gauteng and the Western Cape, but across the board that are actually producing extremely strong um, educational outcomes in, in key subjects like maths and science. And I think yeah. Mimpopo has historically really had some outstanding schools that have really done well for kids from relatively disadvantaged contexts. And uh, certainly quite heartwarming. And you think about, uh, you know, the difficulties that some of the teachers would have even had during COVID-19 and some of the learners as well. But finally, Prof, very briefly, how much of a shadow does the group copying scandal cast on the results? Some are saying that while it's a small number, 945 candidates in total, um, you know, compared to the thousands who would have sat for the exams. But others are saying that if we're still talking about group copying scandals in 2024, then we should be concerned. I think it's a very serious issue. I think we need to be worried about it. Uh, clearly, it isn't a small number. It's a significant number. And it does discredit the work that many of the schools that have worked exceptionally hard, that discredits, potentially discredits um, the exam as a whole. So I think we need to be absolutely vigilant. We need to ensure that investigations are done thoroughly and, if possible, address that uh, coming forward in the next years. Prof, let me thank you so much for your time. Do appreciate it and appreciate your insights this afternoon. That is uh, Professor Bram Fleisch. Um, he is with the Vert School of Education and is the Professor of Education Policy at the school.